Hey everybody, check it out. Behind me is an 1885 Pattenwagen, and here we have the coolest new Mercedes I've seen in a long time. The future is electric, of course. This is the Mercedes Vision EQXX, a fully electric car designed to go a thousand, a thousand kilometers on one charge. So let's take a detailed look around the Mercedes Vision EQXX and what it has to offer. Now the design briefing on this car was simple. Design a fully electric vehicle which can go a thousand kilometers on one charge. And that is exactly what they have done. Now this isn't a production ready vehicle. This is not a vehicle which they're going to start building or selling. But this is a test bed for future technologies, a very drivable test bed which proves what Mercedes is capable of. And it's not just a simulation where you can go a thousand kilometers. They've actually done that. They've taken two trips, one from here in Germany all the way down to the south of France, right by the ocean. Uh, that was just over a thousand kilometers or 625 miles. And the Mercedes team said they still had 140 kilometers or almost a hundred miles of range remaining. And then most recently they drove this car from here in Germany all the way up to Silverstone in the UK. And that was closer to like 1200 kilometers or 700 miles. And that was all on one single charge. I'm uh, Friedemann from Mercedes-Benz, the test driver, test engineer for the project EQXX. And I will um, guide you Wonderful. onto the test track right now and let's have fun. So where are we at here? What is this facility? This facility is Mercedes-Benz own uh, test facility. We go straight around this, uh, owned by Mercedes-Benz. And um, we have different test tracks over there, high speed, uh, off-road, uh, hill climb, <laughs> normal roads, countryside roads. So you will experience that. So the EQXX is a one-off, but check out how finished and refined this vehicle is. So to get into the vehicle, we're gonna hold our hand over the recessed door handle, all in the name of aerodynamics. And this is one of the coolest interiors I have seen in a long time. Now I've been around a lot of prototypes and oftentimes you see them and things are made out of foam and wood and little bits of chewing gum. But this is such a finished looking design. It is just incredible. Let me hop on in here. So we've got one continuous flowing screen from the left all the way to the right. You've seen the uh, EQS hyper screen. This is like that to the next level. It's a touchscreen design. Um, you can, you know, play and configure with all of it. Now, uh, here we have it set up with the solar display, which I think is really cool. It shows us the sun elevation. It shows us the amount of energy we have collected. We've got graphs over here, um, but it's just like, oh, what an insanely cool screen. We've got music panels. This is the next generation, the future of Mercedes interiors. And if it looks anything like this, excuse the flashing the camera, it's gonna be pretty amazing. Now some other cool things on the inside, this beautiful two-tone design with this white leather against this blue material. And of course, it's all a, uh, a recycled material in here. It's designed to be um, sustainable. There goes the uh, 1885 patent wagon. That's kind of a, an incredible dynamic. 1885, the first Mercedes to now the very newest. Flat bottom steering wheel with this uh, exposed kind of silver trim. And here we have that asymmetrical design that continues. Let me show you these floor mats. All right, patent wagon's a little loud for a completely quiet car. So we got these beautiful flush and uh, luxurious floor mats, three vents down the middle. Uh, drive selector up here, we've got speed. This whole screen can be turned off, by the way, uh, in the event that you wanna save the ultimate in electricity and efficiency. The door handles are these wonderful poles. Really cool door contrasting design here. Some gold accenting with the window switch. Even the windows work. That's amazing. This is like a finished prototype. I know they're not gonna build it, but they really should. The seat design is fantastic. Got built-in headrest, kind of a one-piece monocoque design um, with these separate little bolstering down there. The rear seat, pretty small, not super spacious, and then no rear window, which is the weirdest thing, because of course you got the solar panels on the roof. Now, in order to get this vehicle to be as efficient as it is, it comes down to the design. The aerodynamic profile on this car is next level. They're saying a drag coefficient of less than 0.2, which is just mind blowing. The frontal area, by the way, is very minimal. 
and is designed for the ultimate aerodynamics. They actually told me you'd be worse off drafting a vehicle in this car for efficiency because it's designed to cut through the air and cut through clean air that the turbulence created by a truck or by a van would probably result in lower range compared to just, just driving it yourself. Um, and that's how they ran their test, by the way. They weren't drafting, they were cruising along at highway speeds, they weren't um, hypermiling it, they were just driving like a normal driver. So here in the front of the vehicle, almost a completely flat front end. So not a whole lot in terms of aero, um, sorry, not a whole lot in terms of radiator to go on. Now this is a vehicle with a 100 kilowatt hour battery and that is an air cooled battery. So they're not liquid cooling the battery. They said for this project, they didn't need to. They're not seeing any overheating issues. And um, they said quite honestly, that just increases weight and complexity, which they didn't need. So not very much in terms of air inlets. We got these little three pointed stars along the front. The Mercedes badge is just a sticker. It's just a decal, no star, nothing to break up the arrow. Um, you can see the side profile. You've got this kind of beautiful Coke bottle shape as it makes its way to the rear fenders. These wheels are a beautiful design. They, they are an arrow wheel, of course, with almost no slits or slots whatsoever to them, almost a completely flat profile, but they've got these kind of copper rings in them to make them look like the inside of an electric motor. Special Bridgetone tires designed specifically for aerodynamics. It's got a different um, sidewall profile and even the lettering is less pronounced for the ultimate in aerodynamics. It's a pretty narrow wheel. I think it's a 165 on a 20 inch rim. EQXX badging along the side. What I love about this car is like, there's been a bunch of aerodynamic cars produced throughout the years, but oftentimes they look kind of dopey. But this is a pretty phenomenal design overall, the way the, uh, the, the tail sweeps back to a point here. Now these are solar panels, big solar array covering the top portion of the roof all the way to the back. So no rear window, which probably isn't very feasible for road regulations, but these solar panels can deliver and they're testing several miles of additional range depending on how sunny that day is. Now it doesn't feed the high voltage battery, it actually feeds a 12 volt system, but um, keep in mind the 12 volt system runs all of kind of the auxiliary throughout the car. So if you can keep that charge without subtracting energy from the high voltage pack, more power to you. But a very interesting use of a solar array and there's a screen inside which will even show you how much energy that is delivering. Now coming along back, we have this continuous light bar which starts on one end, goes to the other and this enormous aero splitter which is retractable. So it'll electrically pull into the side of the vehicle if you so desire. Charge port is over here on this side of the car and a very small aerodynamic mirror. But overall, a truly great piece of design which is groundbreaking in its efficiency. To the different recuperation modes, how do they work? So we have a high recuperation that is uh, D minus minus. So if you do two clicks down on the left side, mm -hmm. now you're in D minus minus, that is the one pedal drive. Um, the highest recuperation mode, then we have D minus, yep. one click up, that is a bit softer, and then we have D, yep. that is uh, the softest recuperation, the smoothest, and then we have D plus, that is completely coasting, so zero newton meter on the uh, beam machine. This is how we actually open and close the shutters in the front, we've got ambient lighting, um, the diffuser in the back, you can fold it in and out, climate control. Oh, wow. It's like a finished car. I'm amazed by how complete that is. Oh, we got radio controls here. Fantastic. All right, really cool piece of kit in here. I'm very excited they let me kind of sit, sit inside and play around. What do you think of it, guys? It even has cup holders, tiny cup holders. What are you gonna fit in there? That is not an American design cup holder, clearly. But apart from that, I like the jewel-like crystal um, air vents there, the dashboard, right? Very minimalist, unreal. Do you like this one continuous screen? Is this something you could live with? Here we've got our consumption pages. Here we've got power, energy collected, unbelievable. Now, this is a really special experience. I, I can't believe so. Bring yelled at in German. Oh man, I messed up already. Um, <laughs> No, so the goal of this car was a thousand kilometers, 625 miles on a single charge. So you've actually driven it further than that. Yeah. So the first time it was just 1,008 kilometers was roughly um, a charge uh, left of 140 kilometers in the battery, a range left. And the second drive was 
from Stuttgart to UK, Silverstone, 1,202 kilometers. Driving down the road, the, I mean, when you go into D plus, which is no recuperation, I don't think I've ever felt a vehicle that coasts like this. So you let, you let off the accelerator and it, I mean, it just wants to keep gliding and gliding and gliding with the drag coefficient of under 0.2. Uh, but even still, they managed to do this drag coefficient without, you know, completely killing the interior space. Like, you're a really tall guy. Help, you're probably... 196 meters, so... And in, in American units, that's about 12 feet. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's like, <laughs> it's like six foot and a, and a, and a lot. Yeah. I'm six foot one, and even still, like, I'm pretty comfortable. This is a comfortable car. The seats are certainly firm, but they're, they're not horrible. They're not unusable. Um, I do apologize ahead of time. I am profusely fouling up your steering wheel. Yeah, second exit. Um, because this car is worth more than my entire life. I mean, for the most part, it's not squeaking. It's not It's not rattling. It drives really well. So what's the power on this vehicle? What, what's the output? So we have 180 kilowatt on the rear wheel. So we're going up this big hill and you were telling me the goal is to keep it under 25 kilowatts? Yes. Okay. Uh, 17, 18. This is a hypercar, not so much in acceleration, but it's like the ultimate hypercar in trying to drive as efficiently as possible. We have now a drive efficiency of 91%, so 95, uh, 92. Now over here we can get an in-depth look at the battery. So this is a part that they worked with the actual Formula E racing team to develop. 100 kilowatt hours and as we mentioned that is an air-cooled unit this lives underneath the vehicle by the way the efficiency on this somewhere around 95 percent which is some five percent more than an already extremely efficient vehicle like the mercedes-benz eqs now over here we can see some of the reusable and sustainable materials they used for the inside of the eqs so for example milo is a uh, verified vegan leather alternative made from lab-grown biomaterial which is pretty crazy. We've got Dynamica, which is uh, made out of um, recycled materials such as old clothing and bottles and that kind of thing. Um, we've got bamboo, which is what the floor mat is made out of. So lots and lots and lots of recycled materials. And then over here, check out this rear subframe. This is to the extent that they went to save weight on this vehicle. This looks like something out of Avatar, these structures which actually support the weight and the, the stresses of the vehicle. These are not necessarily designed by humans. These are all designed by computers and by artificial intelligence to maximize the, um, the, the weight to strength rating. So like a human, if you were connecting these two parts of this rear subframe, you'd probably just draw a straight line, but the computer actually determined that. Make it thinner here, make it thicker here, make it thinner there, and then cut out the rest of it. Um, this is a, uh, a beautiful piece of engineering. Probably not very feasible for mass production, but for a one-off, it's pretty cool to see. I'm really impressed. It does, it drives, you said before I got in this, that it drives like a race car. Yeah. It drives like a race car, you're right. And we, we kind of saw inside this crazy space-aged um, structure that almost looks like something out of Avatar. And, um, it, you know, when you com combine all these little itty-bitty weight savings um, together, that's where you get the most uh, benefit from this vehicle. Do you know how much it weighs in total? This vehicle weighs 1,755 kilograms. So one more cool feature of the EQXX, this vehicle operates at 920 volts. So this is a very high voltage architecture, unlike the EQB actually, which is right there, which is just over 400. And by the way, they actually have a development mule of this car. It's this black vehicle right here, it's called Emma. So it's got the uh, powertrain, the, the uh, battery and the motor out of the EQXX, but in the EQB. So pretty cool stuff. Um, of course, this vehicle is significantly less efficient because it doesn't look like that. We're gonna finish our drive loop here and then we're gonna, I think, get graded. Well, I'm gonna get graded, he's been amazing. And we're gonna find out how I did. So you can see on our drive route here, uh, my trip was 2143. There's Friedemann, he's a pro driver. He did better than I did because he drove faster. I cheated, it's fine. <laughs> but you can see I averaged, um, where'd it go? 8.07 miles per kilowatt hour, which is insane. Um, the best I've ever done in a typical car is like four, maybe five if you're driving really well. But check out these really cool graphs. This is all for my little drive. You can see my brake applications. Uh, almost crashed there, you can ignore that bit. Um, and then you can see, of course, altitude and feet and consumption over time, which is a really cool thing. But overall, yeah, I think it did okay.
So from the past to the future, the EQXX is showcasing what the Mercedes engineers are capable of. And I just I can't get over how production ready this one-off prototype is. Now, will this ever see production? They're telling me probably not, but we're gonna see technologies that have been learned from this car in future models down the road. Maybe stuff like the solar roof, which is a really smart idea that not many companies have implemented very well. Uh, maybe the, the retractable rear diffuser, which is really cool. These horizontal lights, all things we could see down the road. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, this has been Tommy. We'll see you in the next video.